Hello everyone, today what we're doing is we're actually going to be setting up the Zeta series of cameras. This video is going to apply to multiple of them. It's actually going to apply to the, the swivel here, the micro, and then the IR version. Um, the Wi-Fi version is excluded from this because to actually set this device up, you do it from through your phone because this is a Wi-Fi version. So you actually do this one from your phone. So this video is going to apply to these three cameras specifically, okay? Um, so what what you're going to need to do first is take the Zeta out of your out of the box, insert an SD card, and then plug it into your computer with the provided cable. Once you're there, go to the website, which is spycenter.com, and you can either type in the exact part number on the box here, or if you go down to hidden cameras uh, and then hidden spy cameras, and then you can click on Zeta Max spy cameras, and that brings you here. So. Um, I'm specifically using the IR version today, but again, this applies to all three of these cameras. Um, left click on the device, scroll down a little bit until you, get, you can see the, all the images, and then you can see a support tab here. Go ahead and click on it. And then the very top thing here under software is the ZMAX configuration software. Go ahead and click on it, and that's actually going to bring us to Zetas.com. This is the actual manufacturer of the device. And then you're going to see the DVR widget app. This is for the, the Wi-Fi version. Um, if you wanted to actually download it from their website, you can do it from the Google Play Store or the, the App Store for Apple. So um, you don't necessarily need to download that version from here. But that's not what we're, we're actually working with today. What we're working with is the Zeta configuration tool. Now this is to configure the three cameras that I told you about before. So go ahead and download it. Once it downloads, we're going to want to install it. So as soon as it's finished, go ahead and left click on it. Now it's going to be normal for your computer to do a security sweep on this because this is actually a Hong Kong website. So your your computer's most likely going to do some sort of you know sweep or you know say hey are you sure you want to do this? It's absolutely fine. Um, just hit yes, it's safe, and you're good to go. Um, we can see it popped up here with the Zeta widget setup. I'm going to hit OK. Hit next and accept the license agreement. You're gonna probably wanna read through this. Um, hit next. Choose where you wanna have it installed. I'm fine with the default area. Next, and then install. It's finished. It's a very small program. Um, once it finishes, what we can do here, I'm gonna minimize, and then type in Zeta to open it up. And then I'll show you exactly what I just did there. So give me, I'm going to push this aside. So down here at the bottom left, if you open this up, you can type in, you know, like a search. So I searched Z-E-T-T-A and it found the application and then I just clicked on it. And that's what opened this up. Now, <clears throat> you can see where it says DVR connected and that's, it's either going to be green and say DVR connected or it's going to say, it's going to be red and it's going to say DVR disconnected. It says connected because I have the camera plugged into the computer right now. If you didn't plug in the camera yet, it's gonna say DVR disconnected um, and it won't let you update anything or change anything. So if you see DVR disconnected, um, unplug the camera from your computer, make sure the SD card's plugged in and then plug it back in uh, to the computer and this should turn green. Okay, um, what I wanna do next is, first and foremost, I wanna set the time and date up because the time and date is very, very important. It actually uh, stamps the time and date across the screen of the recording and it keeps it accurate. So to do that, it's actually extremely simple with this device. All you have to do is click this button right here where it says sync date time to DVR. Boom. It says date time updated. It now has the time down here and you are golden. That's all you have to do. Um, now I'm going to take it a little bit further and I'm going to show you guys a couple more things. So there's little tabs on the sides here and if you click on settings, it's going to initially show you this and these are pre-made settings. I personally don't like these um, because I like to customize them, but if, if this kind of fits your needs and you're, you just kind of want to go with, ah, oh, okay, body heat trigger recording, you can click on this and then click sync, and then now it's going to automatically use these settings for the recorder. I personally want to customize my recording. So how you do that is you click on the options tab, and then it says setting mode, and it defaults to express, but if you do custom, and then it says option not saved, so you wanna save the option first. If you go back to settings, look at all these options that I can change. I can customize this to a T. I'm gonna kinda of go briefly over these, um, just the most common ones, I guess, and then if you guys have more questions specifically about them, you can call us, but 
It says video quality, I want it to be high. Resolution, I'm gonna, you're gonna wanna pick the bigger, the best one, which is 1280 by 720. Frame rate, high or low. Um, I would honestly leave this to high because it doesn't necessarily change a whole lot between the two. But if you're trying to capture someone stealing from you or something, I would just go with the highest possible. Um, indoor lighting conditions, uh, 50 hertz or 60 hertz. Uh, you can leave it to default 50 unless you see wavy lines on the picture and then you can change it to 60 and that'll remove the, the wavy lines from the from the video. Uh, day night mode. Um, honestly, it defaults to day mode, but you're gonna wanna set that to auto switching because that's gonna, this the specific device that I'm working with, which I'm gonna go back to the website right here to show you, is this one. This one actually has infrared built into it, which means that it has uh, night vision. So I want this set to auto switching so it'll auto switch to the night vision. So uh, I'm gonna leave that to auto switch. Uh, orientation is normal. This just means that it's gonna, the, the picture is not gonna be upside down. If you're recording and the, the video is upside down, switch that to there. Uh, time and date stamp, I want that enabled. Circular recording, this one's actually really important. Um, what this is, is loop recording. Um, if you had this device plugged into the, to the wall for power and you don't have to worry about battery at that point, um, when the SD card, SD card itself got full of video, it would stop recording to, normally if you had this set to disabled. If you have this set to enabled, what will happen is it will delete the oldest file on the, on the SD card and continue recording in a giant loop. That's why they call it circular recording. So I would by default leave this to enabled unless you, hey, I want to record for X amount of hours and then shut off, then you're gonna to wanna to hit this disabled, but 99% of people are gonna want it this enabled. Uh, split time file, this isn't really that important. 15 minutes is fine. This is just basically telling you that if you have a continuous recording, like let's say if the device is plugged in, staring at a, a, a retail showroom and there's lots of movements, always recording, um, it's gonna take the file every 15 minutes and clip it. So every 15 minutes, clip, you know, cut. 15 more minutes go by, cut. And this is really just for file management. So you didn't have a single file on there that was eight hours long. Um, and that's for a bunch of reasons, but 15 minutes is perfectly fine. You can leave it there. Um, there is a built-in microphone on this device. Um, you can enable it or disable it. Um, by default, you can turn it on. Uh, LED on and off. There's a little LED on the side of the device. Um, you can turn this on for practice to make sure you're doing it right. But realistically, all you do is hold down the power button on them and it starts the recordings. So you can leave that off to be covert. Um, this PIR trigger, this is specific to this model because this has a body heat sensor in it, which is right here when I'm hovering over on my mouse. Um, and that will literally trigger based on heat. So you can, I would turn this on if you want motion based recording long term, you're going to want to turn that on. Uh, otherwise, if you want digital pixelation motion detection, you can change that to disabled. Um, but I'm going to leave this to enabled because I want it to trigger uh, on body heat and I also want the battery life to be extremely long. So again, this option right here is specific for this recorder. This is the only Zeta that has the PIR motion detection. Um, these other these other types of triggers are, uh, they, they actually go across all the different Zetas. So these are not specific to this one, but you have voice trigger, vibration trigger, um, and then you have motion trigger, uh, external trigger, and then um, auxiliary trigger. Um, these are just different types of triggers, so you can set this, and if, and if, if it hears a loud enough noise, it'll start a recording. Um, these are very situationally useful. Most of the time, um, people will use the motion recording on the device um, as the preferred method of, of setting it up. You can also set up a schedule on this thing. Um, it's not too difficult to, to set up, but if you click on uh, schedule recording and hit edit, you have the days of the week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you can, and then here's the uh, clock. So 2100 hours, this is 24, so this is midnight. So you can just choose, let's say nine o'clock. I want it to be um, a PIR trigger at nine o'clock. I can do that. And then I can also make this longer. So if it's say if I wanted it from, let's just leave that one for, for Monday. So, but let's say Monday, I wanna do from 6 a.m. to about six o'clock, I want it to trigger on PIR motion only that's all you have to do. And then say Tuesday between midnight and you know five o'clock in the morning, I want it to just record continuously. That's all you have to do um, to set the, the actual uh, 
schedule up here. And then you can also edit these if you wanted to change this time and date or just delete it. Uh, I don't want to use a schedule. I want to just have it record on motion all the time. Whenever there's motion, record. That's when it's important. Once you have these settings, how you want them, all you have to do is click on the sync settings to DVR. You'll see the green check mark and you're good to go. If you do not do this, like let's say if I do this, set that to medium, it says settings not synced. If I unplug the camera right now, this isn't gonna save. No matter what I do here, it's not gonna save until I actually come up here and I hit sync. Once you see that green check mark, it is set up and you are good to go. If you guys do have more questions about specific options or you know what options we recommend, um, I generally always recommend setting up to motion, but if you do want more information about the scheduled recording or continuous recording or anything like that, just give us a call. We are available Monday through Saturdays to answer any of your questions.